Level zero. You've seen it a thousand times. Pull the plug, watch the water spiral down the drain. That little vortex forming in your sink, spinning lazily as it disappears? Harmless, predictable, almost hypnotic in its simplicity. That's a whirlpool. The baby version, anyway. It forms because water doesn't just fall straight down. As it drains, conservation of angular momentum takes over. The same physics that makes ice skaters spin faster when they pull their arms in. The water accelerates as it spirals inward, creating that characteristic funnel shape we all recognize. Physics 101. But here's what most people don't realize. That same innocent spiral effect scales up, way up. And when it does, it stops being a curiosity and becomes something that can swallow boats whole, trap swimmers in an inescapable rotation, and create forces powerful enough to pull objects 30 feet underwater. The physics doesn't change. The danger does. That gentle rotation in your sink obeys the exact same laws as the massive oceanic vortexes that have dragged ships to the bottom. It's just a matter of scale, energy, and the sheer volume of water involved. The ocean has whirlpools that have been killing people for thousands of years, and the first ones you might actually encounter are hiding in plain sight. Level 1. They call them drowning machines, and that nickname isn't dramatic, it's accurate. A low-head dam looks harmless from above. Just a small drop in the river, maybe three to six feet tall, water cascading over concrete in a smooth sheet. People see it and think, fun place to cool off, maybe wade in the shallow rapids below. What they don't see is what happens at the base. As water flows over the dam, it plunges downward and then curls back on itself, creating a horizontal rotating cylinder of water called a hydraulic. It works like a washing machine cycle that never ends. The surface current flows back upstream toward the dam, while the underwater current flows downstream. Anything caught in this zone gets tumbled, violently and continuously, unable to escape. Kayakers call them keepers because that's exactly what they do. They keep you. A swimmer caught in a hydraulic will be pulled under, tumbled along the bottom, pushed back up near the dam, then immediately pulled under again, over and over. You can't swim out because both surface and bottom currents work against you. You can't get air because you're underwater half the time. Panic sets in within seconds. Exhaustion follows, and the hydraulic just keeps spinning. The only escape is counterintuitive. Curl into a ball, sink to the very bottom, and hope the downstream current beneath the hydraulic is strong enough to flush you out like debris. Or wait for rescue, which might not come in time. But river hydraulics are stationary, predictable, marked on maps. What happens when the whirlpool starts moving with the rhythm of the moon itself? Level 2. Twice a day the ocean breathes. Tides rise and fall, driven by the gravitational pull of the moon and sun, moving trillions of gallons of water across the planet. Most of the time this happens gradually, almost imperceptibly. But when you force enormous volumes of water through narrow channels, something violent happens. Tidal whirlpools form in straits, channels between islands and narrow passages where the seafloor creates bottlenecks. As the tide changes, water rushes through these restrictions at speeds exceeding 10 miles per hour. That might not sound fast, but water moving at that speed carries incredible momentum. And when it encounters underwater rock formations or sudden depth changes, it starts to spin. The Old Sow Whirlpool in New Brunswick, Canada, is one of the largest tidal whirlpools in the Western Hemisphere. During peak tidal flow, it creates a vortex up to 250 feet in diameter. The entire surface of the ocean spirals inward, creating a depression that can be several feet deep. Small boats have been caught in its grip, spun in circles, unable to motor out against the current. In Japan's Naruto Strait, tidal whirlpools reach speeds of 15 miles per hour, creating vortexes that appear and disappear every six hours as the tide changes. The sound is loud enough to hear from shore, a roaring, churning maelstrom that's mesmerized observers for centuries. Tour boats take visitors to witness these whirlpools from a safe distance, but local fishermen know to respect the timing. But tidal whirlpools have an off switch. They come and go with the tide. What if a whirlpool never stopped spinning? Level 3. The Vikings feared them. Medieval sailors told stories about ship-swallowing vortexes that appeared without warning and dragged entire vessels to the bottom of the sea. For centuries, they were considered myths, exaggerations by superstitious sailors. They were real. We call them maelstroms. The original maelstrom, the one that gave all others its name, is the Moskstraumen off the coast of Norway. It's a system of powerful tidal currents and whirlpools that forms between the Norwegian Sea and the Vestfjorden. When conditions align, spring tides, strong winds, Specific current patterns, the Moskstraumen becomes a churning nightmare of overlapping vortexes and turbulent water that stretches for miles. Edgar Allan Poe wrote about it in A Descent into the Maelstrom. Jules Verne referenced it in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. It entered cultural mythology as the ultimate maritime death trap. 
a place where the ocean itself seemed to open up and swallow ships whole. The reality is almost as terrifying as the legend. During peak conditions, the Moskstraumen creates whirlpools up to 40 feet in diameter, with current speeds exceeding 17 miles per hour. The entire sea surface becomes chaotic, overlapping spirals of water moving in different directions, waves colliding from multiple angles, creating a maritime environment that's nearly impossible to navigate safely. The Corryvreckan whirlpool off the coast of Scotland is similar, classified as the third largest whirlpool in the world. It's caused by water forced through a narrow channel between islands, combined with an underwater pyramid-shaped rock that rises 95 feet from the seabed, creating turbulence that spawns vortexes powerful enough to pull small boats under. The sound carries for miles. The spray can reach 30 feet in the air. But even these legendary maelstroms are constrained by geography, trapped between coastlines. What happens when the entire open ocean starts spinning? Level 4. From space, the ocean looks calm, blue, peaceful. That's a lie. The ocean is full of massive rotating currents called eddies, some of them hundreds of miles across, spinning slowly but with incomprehensible power. These aren't whirlpools in the traditional sense, no visible vortex, no dramatic spiral you can point to. But they're the same phenomenon scaled up to planetary proportions. Ocean eddies form when major currents like the Gulf Stream become unstable and pinch off, creating rotating masses of water that drift across ocean basins for months or even years. They're typically between 30 and 300 miles in diameter, spinning at speeds of just a few miles per hour at the surface. That doesn't sound dangerous. And if you're on a boat passing through one, you might not even notice. But the energy contained in these structures is staggering. But here's the disturbing part. These eddies can intensify storms. Hurricanes passing over warm core eddies can rapidly strengthen, drawing energy from the trapped warm water spinning beneath them. Hurricane Katrina intensified partly because it passed over a loop current eddy in the Gulf of Mexico, transforming from a manageable Category 3 into a devastating Category 5 in less than 24 hours. But eddies are slow, predictable, natural formations that take weeks to develop. What about whirlpools that appear in seconds created by human machinery? Level 5. Your ship is sinking, not from a hole in the hull, not from a storm, from its own propeller. Large ships generate their own whirlpools, and in rare circumstances, these become deadly. When a ship's propeller spins, it creates a rotating column of turbulent water behind it. Normally, this disperses quickly into the surrounding ocean. But in confined spaces, harbors, narrow channels, or when a ship performs certain maneuvers, these propeller-generated vortexes can become surprisingly powerful and persistent. A ship turning hard in shallow water can create a strong enough vortex to pull swimmers underwater. There are documented cases of people swimming near a turning vessel and being caught in the propeller wash, dragged down by the rotating water, held under long enough to drown. The victim doesn't even need to be close to the propeller itself, just within the zone of disturbed water the ship creates. But the most dangerous ship-generated vortex is what happens when a large vessel sinks rapidly. When a ship goes down, especially a large one, it displaces millions of gallons of water. As the hull descends, it pulls surrounding water down with it, creating a powerful downward current and a surface vortex that spirals inward toward where the ship disappeared. This suction effect can pull debris, lifeboats, and swimmers toward the sinking site. The myth that a sinking ship creates a massive vortex that will suck down anyone nearby is exaggerated, but not entirely false. The actual danger zone is usually within one to two ship lengths of the sinking vessel. Beyond that, the effect weakens rapidly. But within that zone, the downward pull can be strong enough to drag a swimmer under, especially if they're already struggling with debris or exhaustion. But these whirlpools still require something physical to create them, water or ships or machinery. What about when the air itself starts spinning into a tower of destruction? Level 6. A tornado over water is somehow even more terrifying than one over land. Water spouts are rotating columns of air that form over bodies of water, connecting the surface to the clouds above. They look like twisting tubes of water stretching from sea to sky, but that's mostly an optical illusion. The water you see is actually condensed water vapor. The danger isn't the spray, it's the wind. There are two types of water spouts, fair weather and tornadic. Tornadic water spouts are different. These are actual tornadoes that either form over water or move from land to water. They can have wind speeds exceeding 100 miles per hour, diameters of several hundred feet, and they can last for an hour or more. When a tornadic water spout passes over a boat, the results are catastrophic. The wind can shred sails, snap masts like toothpicks, flip vessels completely over, or simply pick up smaller boats and throw them. But the real killer is what happens to the water underneath. The rotating wind creates a powerful updraft, literally sucking water from the surface. 
This creates a localized low pressure zone that can drop several inches in seconds. Boats near the water spout experience sudden violent changes in water level and pressure. The surface becomes chaotic, with waves radiating outward from the vortex in all directions. The Florida Keys experience dozens of water spouts every year. The Mediterranean sees them regularly. Most are fair weather types that dissipate before causing harm. But every few years, a tornadic water spout catches a boat off guard and people die. But at least you can see water spouts coming, towering columns connecting water to sky. What about whirlpools that exist hundreds of feet below the surface, completely invisible from above? Level 7. You can't see them from the surface. That's what makes them so dangerous. Deep ocean currents don't just flow in straight lines. They spiral, twist, and sometimes form underwater vortexes that exist hundreds or thousands of feet below the surface. These aren't visible to ships, satellites, or aircraft. They're only detectable through specialized oceanographic equipment, measuring temperature, salinity, and current speed at depth. Scientists discovered massive underwater eddies in the Atlantic Ocean that measure up to 60 miles across and extend thousands of feet deep. These vortexes rotate slowly, completing one full rotation every few weeks, but they carry enormous volumes of water and can persist for months. But the most dangerous underwater vortexes are vertical. In the Faroe Islands, scientists discovered chimneys in the ocean, vertical whirlpools where surface water spirals downward into the deep sea. These vortexes are driven by temperature and salinity differences that cause water to sink rapidly, pulling surrounding water into a descending spiral. They're typically only 30 to 300 feet across, but they can reach depths of over 2,000 feet. A diver caught in one of these would be pulled downward with little chance of fighting back. The current isn't violent or turbulent like a surface whirlpool. It's more like being dragged down by an invisible hand. By the time you realize what's happening, you're too deep. Your air is running out and the pressure is crushing you. There would be no warning, no visible sign at the surface. But underwater whirlpools are still localized, constrained to specific regions. What happens when an entire atmospheric system the size of a continent starts spinning? Level 8. This is where whirlpools stop being about water and start being about survival. The polar vortex is a massive, permanent whirlpool of air that circles the north and south poles. It exists in the stratosphere, about 6 to 30 miles above Earth's surface, and it's always there, spinning counterclockwise in the northern hemisphere, clockwise in the southern hemisphere. Under normal conditions, the polar vortex stays tightly wound around the poles, kept in place by the temperature difference between polar and tropical air. But when this vortex weakens or becomes unstable, it can wobble, stretch, or even split into multiple pieces. When that happens, Arctic air that's normally contained above the pole comes flooding south, bringing temperatures that can drop 50 or 60 degrees Fahrenheit in a matter of hours. This is what causes those extreme cold snaps where places like Texas or Florida experience snowfall and record low temperatures. In 2019, a weakened polar vortex brought temperatures to Chicago that, with wind chill, reached negative 50 degrees Fahrenheit. At those temperatures, exposed skin freezes in minutes. Cars won't start. Pipes burst. People die in their homes when heating systems fail. But even the polar vortex follows atmospheric rules and stays bound to our planet. What about when we leave Earth entirely and encounter whirlpools where physics itself becomes extreme? Level 9. Now we leave Earth entirely and enter a realm where whirlpools become death on a cosmic scale. A black hole doesn't just pull things straight in. As matter approaches, it begins to orbit spiraling inward like water circling a drain. Except the drain is a tear in space-time itself, and the water is shredded atoms moving at a significant fraction of the speed of light. This spiraling disk of matter is called an accretion disk, and it's the most violent whirlpool in the universe. As material orbits closer to the black hole, it accelerates, heats up through friction with surrounding material, and begins radiating enormous amounts of energy. The inner regions of an accretion disk around a stellar mass black hole can reach temperatures of millions of degrees, hot enough to emit X-rays that we can detect from Earth with specialized telescopes. But it's not just hot, it's being torn apart on an atomic level. Tidal forces near a black hole are so extreme that they overcome the atomic bonds holding matter together. This is called spaghettification, the technical term for being stretched into a long, thin stream of atoms. If you fell toward a black hole, the gravitational difference between your feet and your head would become so great that you'd be pulled apart lengthwise while being compressed sideways. The accretion disk is where this happens on a massive scale. Stars, planets, gas clouds, all reduced to superheated plasma spiraling inward in a cosmic whirlpool that can extend for millions of miles. But we're not done yet. There's one more level, one final whirlpool type that exists at the edge of known physics, in matter so extreme it barely qualifies as matter at all. Level 10. 
We've reached the edge of known physics and stepped into theoretical territory that makes everything else look ordinary. In the first microseconds after the Big Bang, the universe was so hot and dense that matter as we know it couldn't exist. Instead, there was a state called quark-gluon plasma, a soup of fundamental particles that hadn't yet cooled enough to form protons and neutrons. Scientists have recreated this state in particle accelerators by smashing heavy ions together at nearly the speed of light. For a fraction of a second, they produce a tiny droplet of quark-gluon plasma, smaller than an atom, hotter than the core of the sun. And when they study its behavior, they found something bizarre. It rotates, it forms vortexes. These are the smallest whirlpools that can exist, smaller than an atom, spinning at speeds approaching the fundamental limits of physics. But here's what makes them truly extreme. Quark-gluon plasma is the most perfect fluid ever measured. It flows with almost zero viscosity, meaning once it starts spinning, almost nothing slows it down. The vorticity, the measure of rotation, in these plasma droplets is the highest ever recorded in any substance. If you could somehow scale this up to everyday sizes, you'd have whirlpools spinning at speeds that would tear apart atomic nuclei. But this gets more speculative and more terrifying. Some theoretical physicists have proposed that in the cores of neutron stars, where matter is compressed to densities beyond anything we can replicate on Earth, there might exist permanent vortexes of quark-gluon plasma. These quark vortexes would be microscopic whirlpools spinning at relativistic speeds, existing in a state of matter so extreme that our understanding of physics starts to break down. And then there's the ultimate theoretical whirlpool, the interior of a rotating black hole. According to general relativity, the interior of a spinning black hole contains a ring singularity, a circular region where space-time itself is rotating infinitely fast. This isn't matter spinning. This isn't even a fluid. It's the fabric of reality twisted into a loop. Some solutions to Einstein's equations suggest that passing through this ring could theoretically lead to another universe or region of space-time, but the tidal forces would be so extreme that nothing could survive the journey intact. It's a whirlpool in the truest sense, a spiral leading somewhere else, except it's not made of water or air or plasma. It's made of space-time itself, rotating in ways that physics barely allows and mathematics struggles to describe. From the harmless spiral in your bathtub to vortexes that exist at the boundary of known physics, whirlpools scale across every possible magnitude. They operate in water, air, oceans, atmospheres, plasma, and space-time. They can last seconds or millions of years. They can be inches wide or larger than solar system. And we've only scratched the surface because the universe has been spinning since the Big Bang, and it hasn't stopped yet.